In this video, I'm going to compare two graphics cards that Nvidia and AMD released recently, the GeForce RTX 5070 and the Radeon RX 9070, uh, which are for now the lowest position cards in the latest generation of GPUs. And since the whole supply issue seems to be improving a bit, uh, both the 5070 and the 9070 can be found in stores for prices that are close to their MSRPs, or at least that is the situation here in Europe. So let's check these cards out and let's see how they compare to each other in 45 different games on three different resolutions. Let's begin. The Founders Edition model of the RTX 5070 has a similar design to the RTX 5080 and the 5090, but it is quite smaller. So it still has that nice all metal design with dual flow through fans. And since it is more compact, it should also be more compatible with a lot of different cases on the market. On the back, you get three DisplayPort 2.1B connections and a single HDMI 2.1B port. And to power it up, you still need a single 12 volt 2x6 connection. Now, most modern PSUs will come with that cable, uh, but if your power supply doesn't have it, you have this adapter to connect two regular 8-pin power connectors from your power supply instead. Uh, next to that cable, there are no other extras that are included with this model. AMD, on the other hand, does not have a reference model for this generation, so we tested the RX 9070 Gaming OC model from Gigabyte. This is also a slightly more premium model that should cost you a little bit more, but that also means that it should be a couple of percent faster than a base model RX 9070. So uh, make sure you keep that in mind when we get to performance numbers. The AMD card comes with two display ports and two HDMI ports, but it is powered by two traditional 8-pin power cables instead. So the non-XT version did get some criticism for not being that interesting when you put it next to the XT version uh, that does offer a lot more on paper for a small increase in price. But the 9070 XT is much harder to find here in Europe. And if you do find it, it typically costs about 20 to 25% more than the non XT version. And if I look at these shops at the moment, you can actually buy an RTX 5070 for 650 to 700 euros here in the Netherlands, while an RX 9070 will cost you 700 euros, which pretty much makes them the most direct competitors. If we put the specifications side by side, you cannot really compare them that easily, uh, but there is one important difference between the two cards. The RX 9070 comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, while the 5070 comes with 12 gigabytes of DDR7 memory. Now, faster memory can help the overall performance, but if you don't have enough memory for uh, textures of some games at a particular resolution and particular settings, you will definitely have some performance issues. So I would say having more memory is more valuable. Both cards were tested on an AMD Ryzen 9800X 3D system. And as usual, uh, if you want to know a bit more about the test bench that we were using or uh, what our testing conditions are, uh, I will leave all the details in the description box down below and you can go ahead and check it out. Starting with Alan Wake 2 on high settings without ray tracing, the RX 9070 is off to a great start, beating the RTX 5070 by just over 30% at 4K resolution. While the 5070 here didn't show any improvements over the RTX 4070 Super from the last generation. You should probably enable upscaling on both cards to get a proper 4K experience in this game, which does complicate the discussion a little bit, but I'm going to talk about DLSS and FSR a bit later in this video. Looking at 1440p resolution, the gap remains the same, and even at 1080p, the 9070 was more than 30% faster than the RTX 5070 from NVIDIA. In Formula 1 2023 on ultra settings, which do include some light ray tracing effects, the 5070 just beats the RX 9070 by a single frame, but again, both cards would require upscaling for the game to play smoothly. And they remain very close to each other as we go down in resolution as well. If we look at Cyberpunk 2077, which has been Nvidia's showcase title for a couple of years now, the RX 9070 actually ended up ahead by about 13% at 4K, with the gap shrinking as we go down in resolution. In Baldur's Gate 3, D9070 is about 7% ahead at 4K native, but both cards play this game fine, and at low resolutions, there is not that much between them. 
In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 4K resolution, there is about an 8% of a gap in favor of the AMD card, but here that gap increases a bit as we look at 1440p and then a bit more at 1080p resolution. In Starfield at 4K and high settings, the 9070 was just over 20% faster than the Nvidia, but this is also one of the few AMD sponsored titles in this list, and the 9070 holds that lead pretty steadily as we go down in resolution. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is an NVIDIA sponsor title, and the differences here are much smaller. The 9070 is just ahead, but performance is roughly similar regardless of the resolution. In Remnant 2, the 9070 is a few frames ahead of the 5070 at 4K resolution, with performance that does require upscaling. At low resolutions, there's also a few frames between them in favor of the AMD, but the overall performance is very, very similar. So the RX 9070 is generally ahead of the RTX 5070, uh, sometimes by an insignificant margin, but sometimes by quite a lot. Now Counter-Strike 2 was one example where the situation is the other way around, with the RTX 5070 showing significantly better results, especially at 4K resolution, but even at 1440p, the difference between them is pretty big, while at 1080p the results are a lot closer. And I guess that this is probably because of that faster memory that the RTX 5070 comes with. Now, I'm not going to talk about 45 different games individually, so as usual, uh, let's look at some summaries instead. At 4K resolution, the 9070 is faster in most games, and actually by 10% or more in about 20 of those titles, including Alan Wake 2, Space Marine 2, Dragon Age, and Nvidia's own favorite, Cyberpunk 2077. Meanwhile, the RTX 5070 is faster in 9 games, but only by 10% or more in 6 of those titles, with only the Counter-Strike 2 showing a difference that actually might impact your experience. On average, the 9070 is just under 7% faster. At 4040p, the story is more or less very similar. The RX 9070 is faster in more than 30 games we tested for this video, uh, with a gap of 10% or more in 16 of them, with Nvidia being faster in 9 of the titles. On average, the AMD is about 6% faster once again. At 1080p resolution, the average difference goes down to a couple of percent, but there are still big gaps in some games on this list. Now, if you look at the power consumption, the cards are pretty close as well, uh, both in idle and during gaming workloads. The RTX 5070 uses slightly less power on average, but this is not a difference that you're going to notice on your power bill. Now, AMD is definitely struggling when it comes to fully ray traced or path traced games, and there are a few games that do support this, and when you have the right GPU for it, these games will look incredible. But they're pretty much unplayable on AMD hardware. And unfortunately, uh, the experience is not that great on the RTX 5070 either. So the 5070 does support a multi-frame generation, but if you don't get a good playable experience with just using upscaling, a frame generation is not going to be able to fix things that much. So in Cyberpunk 2077, for example, the 45 FPS average that we got from just using upscaling means that it will not be smooth with frame generation either, even though the 149 FPS does sound nice. And the same goes for Alan Wake 2. It is a bit better than Cyberpunk overall, but it is not nearly as nice as just playing this game at regular high settings instead. Uh, if we just look at upscaling technology alone, the comparison between these two cards is more difficult than it was before, since both AMD and Nvidia have really improved their upscaling with this new generation. So AMD's FSR 4 uh, looks very good, and it is a huge step up from the FSR 3, and while it might not be as good as Nvidia is today, the gap is smaller than ever. So the only downside of AMD is the number of games that support FSR 4. Uh, if I look at 45 games that we tested for this video, there are quite a few games that would really benefit from upscaling at 4K resolution, but only Space Marine 2 supports FSR 4. Uh, some of them can use FSR 3 and some only FSR 2, but anything under FSR 4 is just not good enough compared to native and definitely not good enough compared to DLSS from Nvidia. Nvidia, on the other hand, improved their DLSS even more with their transformer model uh, to the point where you should be using it 
all the time at high resolutions. You can basically run DLSS 4 Super Resolution at 4K in performance mode or at 1440p in balance mode and get native-ish quality level, but then with much better performance. And the list of games that support DLSS 4 is much bigger, plus uh, you also get the DLSS override feature in the NVIDIA app that you can use to manually apply the new DLSS model to a lot of games that didn't get updated by their developer just yet. So the RTX 5070 does need help from upscaling in more games than the RX 9070, but the overall experience of playing those games at 4K resolution is better with an NVIDIA card. So if you're considering either of these cards for non-gaming tasks, it kind of depends on what you want to do. So obviously AMD is great for anything that requires uh, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but Nvidia's dominance in the market just means that a lot of applications will be optimized better for GeForce GPUs. In these Blender benchmarks, for example, the RTX 5070 is 65 to 85% faster. And uh, when it comes to things like AI, for example, Nvidia does better as well. But if you really need to use a GPU for your work, I kind of do think a higher end model would be a better choice. Anyway, uh, if we assume that most of you are looking for a GPU to play games, uh, both the RTX 5070 and the RX 9070 are very competitive when looking at native rendering. Uh, some games clearly benefit AMD and some games clearly benefit Nvidia, but on average, you're usually looking at a couple of percent between them, uh, with uh, AMD being slightly ahead. The cheapest RX 9070 is about 7% more expensive than the cheapest RTX 5070 at the moment, uh, which is also the exact percentage between them at 4K resolution. And uh, since both cards have a roughly similar power draw, uh, anyone who had already set their mind on either AMD or Nvidia uh, won't really have a reason to change that opinion. But I don't know if that level of competitiveness is good enough for AMD. I mean, it is definitely impressive how much they improve their upscaling technology, for example. And uh, I fully understand why some of you really dislike how Nvidia portrays their DLSS numbers sometimes. But the reality is that when you look at the performance levels of either of these cards, you cannot just ignore upscaling. And I would say AMD is definitely on the right path with their technology, but they're still a bit behind DLSS. And maybe when FSR 4 support becomes more of a standard, uh, my recommendation might change as well. But many games today don't even support FSR 3 just yet. So I'm kind of afraid that it might take a while until we have a widespread FSR 4 support. And even if we look at the 1440p gaming where fewer games need upscaling, you can still benefit from it regularly. So I cannot recommend you pay 7% more for a card that is 6% faster natively. For an RX 9070 to make sense at 1440p, it needs to be cheaper than the RTX 5070. And please don't get me wrong, I most definitely do not love the RTX 5070 either. It is a disappointing step up from the RTX 4070 Super, and then especially so when you consider that Nvidia was promising RTX 1490 level of performance, uh, which is just pure nonsense. But when it is actually the only model in stores that is available at its MSRP, and it is cheaper than a 9070, and much cheaper than an RTX 5070 Ti, it doesn't feel like uh, the worst option at the moment, or at least not until the uh, 5070 Ti or 9070 XT start being sold for prices that are around their MSRPs. So if you can wait that long, uh, that will probably be the wisest choice at the moment. Anyway, uh, that is all I have for today, but before I go, let's check out the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their brand new gaming monitor, the Xenion 34WQHD 240C. This beautifully designed monitor comes with a top-of-the-line 34-inch QD OLED panel with a subtle 1800R curve, an ultra-wide Quad HD resolution, 240Hz refresh rate, instant response times, and a near-perfect color reproduction, making it a great option for anything from fast-paced games to immersion games, from content consumption to content creation. And if you are worried about possible burn-in that is inherent to all OLED panels, 
Corsair has you covered with a three-year-long warranty that includes burn-in. So if you're looking for a new high-end ultra-wide, please do check out the link in the description below. Thank you all for watching and staying to the very end. Uh, I really hope this video was helpful enough. Uh, I'm also preparing a comparison of a couple of partner cards that I managed to get my hands on. So if you want to see uh, that one too, please do consider clicking that subscribe button so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!